Welcome to a brand new video. Last time I showed you how to drastically reduce the size of your Docker images by using Docker multi-stage builds. And this time I don't want to focus on the size, but rather on the time it takes to create a Docker image. So we want to speed up the Docker build process. Last time I used a, a um, compiled language. I used Golang as an example for a compiled language. And this time um, I want to use Node.js as an example for a interpreted language. Among platform engineers and just developers in, in general, there's this ongoing uh, joke that if you do an npm install, npm being the package manager for Node.js, you have to download the entire internet. And there is some truth to that. Node.js packages often depend on other packages and you uh, quickly end up with a sort of long dependency chain and have to install quite some stuff. And npm install used to be very slow in, in older uh, Node versions. It's gotten a bit faster, but still, if we can avoid unnecessary waiting time, um, why shouldn't we? What I'm showing you here is another very common mistake in, in Docker files. It's really easy to fix. So just first for this um, server here, it just has one handler similar to last time. And it's saying hello from this Node.js application. We also have a Docker file. And again, it's a very common one that you would see. We depend on an Alpine image. So already starting with a small image here, set our work directory, copy in all the files, do an NPM install, and then at runtime, um, run our application. So one of the benefits of containers is this isolation. So we don't want to depend on some state or anything. It's almost like a, like a pure function. So that's why we want to install our dependencies as part of this Docker build process here. And we definitely want to keep that. But let's see if we can improve it. So what's the problem with this one here? Let me just show you. Let me do a Docker build. Now we're running npm install. That takes some time. So this is the first time I'm building this. And here we added 375 packages in six seconds. So I added a couple of random packages here um, that we don't really need, um, but just to sort of simulate a bigger application, Chart.js, Express, Moment, React, Webpack. So nothing out of the ordinary here. So just to show you that this app is running, if we do a Docker run, minus P, you should also have that in my history, and switch to the browser, we get hello from this Node.js application here. So let's say we want to change something about this application. Let's change this here and let's say hello from this, well, maybe from this mediocre Node.js application. Oops, that's how we spell mediocre. Okay, so now we need to build it again. And we have to install all of our dependencies again. Even though all we did was change a small REST handler in here. So wouldn't it be cool if we could optimize this? And in fact, we can. If we look at our Docker file, each step in a Docker file, or not, not every step, but most steps create layers. And layers are also used in caching, and they go from top to bottom. So the context for copy has changed because we've changed our source code here. That means from here on down, we have to recalculate or rebuild every layer. So ideally, what we'd want to do is only start copying this after we install this. But of course, like this, this won't work because what do we install? We have no kind of context. So let's think in Node.js, what do we need to install? Actually, we only need two files. There's a package JSON and the package lock JSON and a package JSON here. And then we can just copy that to the current folder. So now if we build this, the first time, of course, it'll still take some time. Cool, again, about six seconds. So let's do a Docker run. And here we have hello from this mediocre Node.js application. So now let's change it again. Let's change it to this awesome Node.js application, do another Docker build, and hey, no install step required, but did it actually work? Let's see, let's find out. Yes, it did. Well, this is a very small application with very few dependencies. Of course, the advantage of this gets bigger and bigger as the application gets bigger as well. And just because I used an interpreted language here doesn't mean this is only beneficial for them. In fact, in uh, Golang, for example, downloading uh, dependencies often can take quite some time. Actually, GoDep Ensure is sometimes pretty slow on CI systems. 
So um, this really helps you with all kinds of languages. It does rely on the cache of the Docker daemon though. So if you're running this on CI, it of course only works if your Docker daemon is somewhat persistent or keeps the cache between individual builds. If you have a random Docker daemon that doesn't have any kind of cache, then you lose these benefits. But that's another thing that I've seen in the wild where people spend so much time um, or basically just waste so much time waiting for Docker to build um, when you really don't need to do it. Because if you think about it, you change your source code on every Docker build. Otherwise, you wouldn't do a Docker build. But how often do you change your dependencies? Maybe every 10th build. So really, there's no need to wait every time. If you like this video, please subscribe. Plenty more coming up on Docker, Kubernetes, DevOps in general. Also planning on doing a couple more videos on different CI topics. Jenkins X is really hot right now. Maybe something on, on that. So make sure you subscribe and don't miss it. Thank you and see you next time.